Welcome back, everybody. Grand Tactician, Civil War, Grum Grumpa Gaming, and this is episode 27 of Federal Spring of 61 Campaign. We've got no new viewer units this episode, so we're going to be jumping straight into the historical record. So just as a reminder, these videos are always chaptered. You can jump around to whichever part you so choose. An article from the Grumpy Times. Sunday evening edition, dated 10 May, 1863. Mess at Franklin. It's been almost a month since the Second Corps began its march in Missouri, and we go on the road to St. Louis. The Rebel Corps and the Army of Kentucky holding the city marched to halt the boys of the Second Corps. The Second only seen little to no action leading up to this day, and with one of uh, General McClellan's aides said after the battle, he has old Scott on his back to do something. Ordered the Corps to attack, not knowing the full strength of the Rebel forces. The scouts from the Cavalry, both Union Rebel Corps, meeting outside a small town of Franklin this morning around 7. After a short exchange, the Rebel Cavalry withdrew, leaving the Buffalo soldiers blocking the road. It was shortly after 8, the lead elements of Rebel infantry came into view from a small rise where I was with two of Colonel Sykes' riders. One of the riders who just returned said the Corps strung out all along the road. It might be mid morning before they're on the field. Half past 8. When the first of the Rebs entered the range of the Buffalo Soldiers' rifles, the lead infantry from the 8th Division finally came into view. Right at 9, just as the Rebs started to push on the Buffalo Soldiers with two brigades, with the 3rd stacking up behind those two, the 15th Division started to take up on the right of the road. The only division still on the road were the 18th and the 4th Artillery, who were somewhere. It was 5 after 9 when Colonel Sykes and the Buffalo Soldiers, after holding for an hour, broke under withering fire from the Rebels. Quarter past nine when the Rebels' lead brigade entered firing range of the 8th Division, who were behind the stone wall. Finally, the 18th Division reached the field about half past nine. Two, maybe four Rebel brigades pushed out of the woods, marching at the 15th Division. Looked over to the left, I could see batteries setting up near some trees, which opened up on the 5th German rifles, were at that time having three Rebel brigades pushing down on them. 5th German rifles on the extreme left of the line at 10 started to be flanked by a rebel brigade that came out of the back tree line where the rebel batteries were firing from. As I looked back to right, the entire line began to move forward. After 10 minutes of taking fire, the 5th Germans started to fall back, refusing to the left. Around half past 10, the 5th Germans broke while trying to hold the left of the line. Luckily, that rebel brigade stopped once they reached the stone wall. It was just half past 10, when I spotted General McClellan slowly riding up behind the 8th Division. There was still no sign of second corps batteries. It was a quarter till 11 when the first of the boys reached the tree lines. From the standard, it looked like the newest brigade, 33rd Ohio Volunteers. By 10 till 11, the rebs out in front of the 8th Division had been driven from the field. It looked like some fresh brigades coming out of the Naval Orchard across from the line. A little past 11, the Dusty Bridges and Harper's Ferry Raiders charged headlong into a lone rebel brigade. A few minutes later, Danish lifeguards in the 2nd East Series began their own charge at the Red Brigade. It was quarter past 11 when Harper's Ferry Raiders and Dusty Bridges began to withdraw with some of the men dropping their rifles. Before I could try and ask Colonel King what had happened, I felt the sharp pain in my shoulder. I looked up only to see a puff of white smoke from a shell that exploded above me. Around a quarter till 12, Colonel Ward and Danish lifeguards was wounded. Around noon, the Cyclone Blacksmith stopped working on the breastworks and started to move up into the fight. Quarter after 12, 2nd East Surrey's found themselves under a rebel charge. About half past 12, the Dusty Bridges reformed. Started out back to the left looking for revenge on those Rebs. It was about the same time when someone yelled, Finally! When I looked back, the first of the guns of General Andrews' 4th Division was in sight. After the fight, I spoke to some of the men in the Irish Brigade to see what they had been up to. He said, those damn rebels had just kept them out in the swamp playing Rochambeau. It's a quarter to one, I seen the Buffalo soldiers ride past, moving on to the left. It's close to half past two, and where the Rebs finally withdrew from the field. By the end of the fighting, the rebels lost over 10,000 men killed or wounded. The Second Corps lost close to 4,400 men killed or wounded, not counting one reporter. As I was finishing riding in the field hospital, several soldiers walked past make a jest of General McClellan and General Andrews of the Artillery Division, calling them slower than molasses for how long it took them to get into the fight. On a more serious matter, when I spoke with one of McClellan's aides, he said President Lincoln was unsatisfied with his slow actions. He 
General Scott has been getting running roughshod over him to get replaced. Right now, it looks like it might be General Reynolds getting command. And with this battle, it might just happen. So, um, there has been uh, much clamoring from the White House and from the press corps for the replacement of George McClellan and his uh, slowness to action at the Battle of Franklin. Now, quite frankly, he is uh, too politically connected to replace right now. So, uh, General Scott, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, uh, correction, not Commander-in-Chief, Commanding General of all the armies for right now has replaced the 4th Artillery Division commander with uh, John Gibbon, formerly commander of the 2nd U.S. Battery of the 7th Corps. So uh, Andrews is now out of the war. And, uh, probably going to be assigned to some fortification up on the Canadian border. So uh, McClellan's got a little time left, not much, but he's got a little time left to uh, correct himself. So uh, last episode, we did, just like that newspaper article said, we had a mess of a fight here at Franklin that was just kind of all over the damn place. Rebs just refused to break, but we finally won the day and we are now securing St. Louis. Once... Uh, McClellan's second corps is recovered enough to be in actions. Again, I'll be pushing them back south to Cairo to resecure the city from the rebel forces that are present there. Now, here in the Indian Territory, we're still waiting for 7th Corps to recover itself. Come on. They are back in the green, but they have no supplies, so we're still waiting for this depot to be built, and that'll be 12 days away from being completed. So. Towards the end of May, we'll get them moving again. Fifth Corps is still sitting at Shreveport, waiting for their supply depot to build so they get resupplied. I'll be ready in eight days. As soon as they have their supplies back up, I'll be pushing them up to Little Rock. And Sixth Corps looks like they're going to be out of action for the rest of the campaign season, as I can't push any further than this until 1864 campaign season begins. It looks like it's a little quiet over here along the... Potomac line. It seems to be that they're transferring, even though they got all these corps stacked up here, they seem to be transferring a lot of their soldiers out to the Western Theater to stop 2nd Corps, 5th Corps, and 7th Corps. And completely ignoring 6th Corps. You figure they'd have an army operating down Mississippi, Alabama, trying to uh, block them, but they have not done so yet. And I think that covers everything for right now, so I'll be back with the next action. All right, everybody, it's actually now June 1st. I actually managed to go the rest of May without a combat action, but as you can see, we got one coming up here. I did have something weird happen, and it forced me to disband 7th Corps, which pretty bad, considering that was my Siege Corps and Engineering Corps, so uh, they lost all of their perks. Uh, after the last Siege battle here, at Fort Arbuckle, and they retreated south here to Fort Rashida. They somehow became part of the garrison, and I could, them, could not get them out of the garrison, so I ended up having to create a new corps, transferring all the units out, disbanding the old 7th and reforming it. So, uh, they're not going to be as good at their jobs as they were, sadly. The units inside the corps are still good units, it's just the corps itself does not have any of the perks that it did have previously. But moving on there, like I said, it's now June 1st, so it's time to go over to monthlies, and then uh, we're jumping into a siege combat here with Greg's Corps. All right, current rate of our nation is triple B. I think that's the first time it's been correct in a while. Currently, our liabilities mount up to a billion dollars. Current economy cycle is contraction. Wealth of our population is low and increasing compared to the previous month. It says our revenues increased by 438 million. That's not right. That's probably what we brought in all together. Uh, didn't construct any buildings in the last month. And exports, once again, are even on. So, like I think I discussed in the last episode, I think that is a glitch that came with whiskeys and lemons that's been popping up lately. 
Uh, average core production over the last three months was 386 million, a change in negative 7.2. So production is getting higher. And our economy lacks wool, food, iron, and all the other usual stuff that we are normally lacking and is a fool's game to try and catch up on. You can do it in some areas, but for the most part, it's a fool's errand. Right now, spending-wise, we're still spending a lot less than the Rebels are. So we basically have what we need, once again, outside the Sharps rifles and Sharps carbines, which are replacing the, slowly replacing the weaponry that we are using currently. So we are spending 156 million more than we are bringing in, and that's been decreasing month over month. So our costs are coming down. Slowly but surely, we are bringing them down. We're not intelligence. Rebels are working on industrialization too. Their relations with Great Britain and France have not gotten any better. Looks like they recruited one more brigade and started building another ship. While their arms is currently at 58%, so they're still... Their, their army's morale does not seem to be recovering after all the beatdowns that we've been giving them lately. It's getting lower and lower and staying low. one here strategy look at strategy our national morale is 71 to their 51 national support we're at 57 to their 59 says our morale is at 58 to their 60 so that might have been an erroneous report there uh men fielded we have 211,025 in the field they have 222,612 in the field so they actually just surpassed us by a number of men in the field uh navy tonnage we're at 67,620 to their 224,550 which I still don't know what the hell they're doing with all of it. Uh, total casualties. We're sitting at 104,000 casualties. They're 219,908. I don't know. We are pretty much beating them across the board on everything. Uh, policies. We are almost done with Bank Act 1. That will be done in uh, three more days. Then we'll start building banks in all the cities. Then uh, we'll run over to... I want to do Revenue Act 3 first or run over to Military 3 first. I think we'll do Military 3 right afterwards so I can create a theater command. So, uh, Gruntcaw can take command of the entire theater here with several different units operating in it. So I think that's what I'll do. But that'll take 88 days, so that's going to take a while. Projects. What do we got available? Trying to save up more money to subsidize railroad construction again. I want to put another point into there. Can't get another point of farm mechanization. So we'll take that. That's always a good one to grab. This is the output of our farms. Freeze up more men. We don't need more men. We got plenty of volunteers and drafts. We're not even touching. So uh, don't really need that. We're not going to bother with suppressed population as... The enemy AI has pumped so much money into counter propaganda and other things that we'll never beat it back down. Military wise, well, we're not saving up for railroad construction anymore, so we're taking a level of weapon production, speed up the Sharps rifles construction. So we'll take another level of recruit agents. That's all we need for right now. What does uh, that next level of recruit agents give us? Supposed to be plus 30% on our intelligence. Plus our newspapers. Hopefully we'll start seeing some better intelligence come in. Hopefully. We'll see if that works or not. Otherwise, uh, everything else has been quiet. Fifth Corps is now in Little Rock, securing Little Rock for us. I am... What the hell happened to six score? How the hell you guys end up down here? I and mean, why can't you? Why are they going down here to Fort Livingston? I'm starting to think my game is starting to glitch out. There's got to be something wrong with my save. 
They were supposed to be heading to Fort Maycomb to besiege it, and they hadn't even reached there yet. So I wanted them to take down uh, Fort Maycomb and Fort St. Philippe so I could finally get my fleet to port in at New Orleans. Huh, I'll have to take a look at that. Now, besides that, we got another action coming up here. Let's get this map moving along and uh, force this action on. How's McClellan looking? I mean, I know we're doing all that tonnage a lot here in the rivers. Supplies are still bad, probably because of those two uh, fleets sitting there. So let's march on down to Frederick and take that depot. And they took Fort Arbuckle before I arrived. Really? They took that fast. They didn't even have that under siege one day. They must have straight up assaulted that. That's not good. What are you waiting for? Your army commander's right here. Should have those orders. Grumpy, halt, please. Please halt. <laughs> He's like, we're going to be fighting over this fort again. Grumpy, where are you going? What the absolute? And 7th Corps is retreating away too. Are you goddamn kidding me? We got... We got green right in this. We have weapons. We have ammo. We have food. What's going on? Uh, nope. Looks like we're not going to get that fight I was just talking about. So, I'll be back. Alright, it's now June 15th and things are not looking so hot for us in the Indian Territories. Hero Mansfield's 7th Corps has now retreated three times in the face of the enemy, so I've been forced to replace Mansfield with uh, Jesse Reno. Not the uh, best man for the job, but he's the only other major general without a job at this point, so uh, he got it by default, so he'll get his chance to shine if he can. I've ordered 6th Corps out of New Orleans and upriver up to Dokesville to uh, confront Greg's Corps before they reclaim all the Indian Territory fortifications. We need to start reversing this situation and fast, otherwise my summer, spring and summer campaign is not going to complete in time. Looks like we're going to be meeting on the river here, maybe. And six core got out of the river. Why? Now we've lost sight of Greg's core. Awesome. What the hell's going on? Oh well, just a little update there on uh, change of command with the Corps. I thought we were going to have ourselves into action. I guess not, so I'll be back. Alright, it's now June 17th and it looks like we're picking up an action where I did not expect to pick up one. Robertson's Corps of the Army of Kentucky is blocking us at Caver. Somehow we did not have a sighting on him. So we don't have him on the map at all. So, uh, we're coming in with 26,993 infantry, 1,160 cavalry, and 61 guns. Going up against 32,036 infantry, 2,356 cavalry, and 75 guns. 
I mean, one of the few occasions where the uh, rebels do have a numerical superiority on us. So, I'll see you all on the tag map. Welcome, my grunts, to the Battle of Benton Ferry. So, uh, once again, we are on the Copperton map, and we are attacking up here at the McDaniel Farmhouse along uh, Mason Hill Road. So, my plan for right now is... I'm not going to approach through Copperton and through these woods, so I probably should, but I don't like having these uh, marshes on my right when I'm attacking. So I'm going to be coming out along this road here and coming through Mason Hill and down Mason Hill Road and using the open terrain to use the uh, artillery advantages I do have if the guns come up in time. So uh, that's it for right now. It's, it's going to be a very straightforward affair as far as I'm concerned. Basically just trying to get my artillery up here on the heights and then pushing in with the infantry as I always do. We'll see how that plays out with McClellan still in command and a new commander of the uh, 4th Artillery Division. So, I'll be back. Well, it's uh, 1956. We went on to the end of the day. My corps is just finally coming up and we just got siding of the Rebels. And <laughs> they've actually... Read my mind on my attack path as they do have breastworks right across the road here with most of their forces set up there. So it actually would have been better for me to attack from this direction. But we're not changing our attack plans at this point. Even out over here. Wow. The uh, AI commander they put in charge. This, <laughs> this core commander knows what he's doing he's he's expecting me from every direction but uh amazingly uh the change of command for the artillery division seems to have worked as they were not as slow this time getting up into position as they had previously so um going by my game rules once again we're not allowed an overnight reset so uh we go with what we got right now. Actually, let me get that division moving at the double. Get that gun set up. How many overnight attrition did I take? About 43 overnight attrition. I had 10 casualties from the artillery, sporadic artillery fire. So, about 43 overnight casualties. Get those guns into position so I can get the infantry on the move. I'm going to be leading off with 18th Division, which has U.S. Marine Corps Brigade, Irish Brigade, and Carson's Trappers. I think we're actually going to be moving in from the left over here. So let's start cutting across where the batteries are setting up. I don't want to attack straight at the breastworks. That'd just be a bad idea. And they still do have us outnumbered. Copper's taking uh, casualties from the artillery, so let's pull them back. McClellan's actually where I need him to be right now. We'll see if that holds throughout the rest of the day. Probably be a few minutes before I'm ready to go, so I'll be back. All right, it's now 6.35 in the morning, and I'm kicking my attack off. Uh, doing my batteries out here. Oh, they're sending their cavalry brigade down the road to come at me. What the... That's interesting. I'm sending my cavalry off to the left flank. Help clear off back here, but I guess that's no longer an option. There goes the Irish Brigade getting the first shots in for the infantry. Bring that cap. Holy shit, they're actually coming out to attack me. I guess they were tired of their uh, batteries getting hammered. Okay. Change of plans, boys. Change of plans. 15th Division, halt.
I had the Cyclones building breastworks so I could move my guns up closer while they were under fire. Uh, looks like that will not be necessary now. Artillery. Fire at will. Eighth division, you're going to. Eighteenth division, you're going to continue doing what you're doing. Eighth division. Push out this way. Fifteenth. Cut back across. Calvary, where are you? Get out of here and hold off Nichols. Actually, kind of nice looking on the map right now. Sunrise and glare on a little bit of fog we got going on, or that morning mist, 86 degrees. Nice beautiful day. Cyclone, stop what you're doing. Engage the cavalry. This is totally unexpected. An interesting surprise. This is an interesting surprise, I have to say. These guys are riding flank on into canister fire. That is not a good spot to be in. Not necessarily count canister batteries, but uh, they'll do the same amount of damage nonetheless. Where'd that infantry brigade go? All right. And it's on the stream. We keep pushing across. All right, blacksmiths, back to work. Good job, though. Looked like they had been sending everybody. Looks like they might have changed their minds. And Buffalo soldiers swing up this way. We're going to let the artillery take down this brigade. They're just out in the open waiting to be battered. There's that infantry. Irish Brigade engage. Grappers engage. Marines swing out here. Let's give you halt orders and uh, resend those. So we don't get a weird path finding. Now if anybody's wondering what today's battle brew is, it's uh, coffee with a bit of Irish in it. Retreating artillery units blocking them. little push maybe change all my plans. Come back to counter battery. We need to clear those guns out. Which 
Frappers are moving like sluggards again in this battle. I think I'm replacing Robinson afterwards. They are definitely trying to stay out of engagement range of me, though. They literally left that battery out here to die on its own. If Germans face on. Get the engineers cross firing them, very good. That brigade won't last long. And since you boys have been moved out of position anyway, start pushing up over here. Backing away from us. They do not want to play. Brigade wasn't lasting long. And this little corner here is getting hammered by my artillery, so anything standing there is getting hit, no matter whether it's artillery, cavalry, or infantry, it's getting hit. See your orders yet. Alright, on. Let's push you up over here. Alright, Travers, you need to make up for last battle. Let's go. Gates pushed out of the way. We'll slide the 8th Infantry left and approach along this uh, tree line right here. They don't want to play, keep advancing. Push them in away. Give space for the eighth to move in. in this division to the right. The 
subdivision in town to pick up some fresh real estate. Why do these boys not want to fight? Their morale is really low. Holy crap, it's at 26. No wonder they don't want to fight us. As far as even stood to fight us at St. Louis. Or on my big. Just outside of Cairo. I'm surprised they even bothered trying to block us. They don't have the morale for it. We've broken all their batteries. Most of them. That one's about to go. This one hasn't been hit yet. Taking a few casualties. That looks like overnight attrition, though. Once the eight's in position, I'm going to push them straight across. It's going to take a long time for orders for this uh, for the 18th division to get over there. My bad, 15th, I think it is. Yeah, 15th. There are rebels here. They're all ready to break. Right eighth, I think we're in a good enough position. To start pushing across. This is just odd. I'm not used to the AI uh, not wanting to engage like this, especially if they started marching men up the road to get to us. But maybe that was just to get siding on our positions. I don't know. Or they thought I left my batteries unattended, which I almost did. Keep pushing this division to the end of the map. Just gotta wait for the Marines to push through this little marsh here. You think they'd be better at walking through that stuff concerning the Marines? <laughs> Alright, keep pushing on them.
They are really strung out over here in the woods. You guys are going in on a weird attack angle. Push forward in there. I hate it when the AI starts having them cross pads for no damn reason. Gonna fall back again. Yep. How the engineers looking? Getting those works complete. Push up. Almost a level three. They might have it by the time they finish that line. They'll push up on their breastworks. Doesn't look like they want to hold them. Ferry, just come take the objective point. Don't really need it, but might as well take it. You boys actually gonna hold? No, of course not. My men are gonna get tired walking after them. Alright, Surrey's. Get this brigade in the open. 33rd, hit the brigade to their left. Lifeguards, hit the next brigade to their left. Breaking and running. Oh, these guys are actually stopping the fight. Guess they decided they had nowhere left to go. Trappers, get a move on, please. Robinson, you're losing your command. that brigade. Let's go break this last one. You're 
definitely going for a retreat soon. They haven't already, yeah, they already put the call out because the unit's moving away. Secured. Oh, don't stand there again to uh, fight with some skirmishers. All right, Germans, go get me those guns. Damn you, britches. Batteries are actually standing. That's <laughs> the old infantry is retreating, but they're leaving the batteries behind. Bayonets, boys. Get in there before the canister you. Where do our playmates go? This is weird. I am not used to seeing this. This is kind of what like late war battles looked like, a uh, slight delaying action while the army kept trying to get away. What do you expect to see in 64, not 63? Marines, go baiting at them. Yeah, they go, finally retreating. They got no idea where to run to. This is... <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. I really don't. Probably one of the best attack move maneuvers ever put forward, but they didn't stand to fight me against it. I really just don't know what the hell to say about it. It's like... Forced me to change my attack plans, and it looks like it would actually end up being a better attack plan than my initial one, and... It didn't really give me the chance to test it because it didn't stand and fight. Especially with that numerical superiority they had going. Just speed this along now. I really just don't know what to say to that. 
Oh, Hal, you can stop chasing them. I know you're all full of piss and vinegar after your uh, victory to last battle. I'm actually quite amazed. Especially with how low their morale was at the start of that. We took down 3,400 of their 34,000 infantry, 600 of their 2,500 cavalry. Got all 80 of their guns. Total loss of 5,000 of their 38,000 men. We lost 422 of our 26,986 infantry. About 50 of that was overnight attrition. 31 of our 1,159 cavalry. One of our 61 guns, counter battery fire. We lost 491 men of our 29,068. Yeah. That's pretty disgusting. Do this real fast and take a quick look at the paperwork. Buffalo soldiers actually didn't get any shots in there. They didn't get there to the enemy cavalry fast enough. Cyclone blacksmiths did 71 to infantry, 72 to cavalry for total 143. 15th Division, Danish lifeguards did 136 to infantry. 2nd East Series did 116 to infantry. 33rd Ohio did 113 to infantry. Division total 365. 8th Division, Harpers Ferry Raiders did 123 to infantry. 5th German Rifles did 245 to infantry, 73 to cavalry, 40, 54 to artillery, captured another 50 for total 428. Dusty Britches did 302 to infantry, 34 to cavalry, 4 to artillery, captured 208 for total 548, division total 1099. 18th Division Irish Brigade did 474 to infantry, 3 to artillery, which captured another 182. Brigade total 660. Carson's Trappers did 34 to infantry, 40 to artillery, total 79. Yeah, Robinson's losing his command. This is two battles in a row where he was slow stepping his brigade. He's out. The U.S. Marine Corps Brigade did 237 to infantry, took four prisoners, total 245. Division total 984. Looks like the Irish Brigade's going to be getting the uh, Grumpy Seal of approval for this battle. Fourth Artillery Division. Fort Pickens Garrison did 34 to infantry, 33 to cav, 77 to artillery, total 146. First Connecticut Battery did 74 to infantry, 140 to cavalry, 30 to artillery, total 244. First New York Light Artillery did 38 to infantry, 25 to cavalry, 28 to artillery, total 91. First Delaware Battery did 97 to infantry, 93 to cav, 120 to artillery, total 318. Division total 799. Much, much, much better showing from the artillery this battle than last battle. But yeah, the uh, commander of the trappers is out. See if you got any other commanders. I'm kind of doubtful. They really didn't hang around the. Oh, we killed Major General Reigns. Killed a division commander. Okay. Wounded Major McLaughlin. And wounded Major Eshelman. So we killed a division commander and two, wounded two battery commanders. That's actually, uh, I wasn't even expecting that. I'm going to close out here and I'll see you all at the newspaper screen. Victory at Benton Ferry. Not much of a battle, but a much better shown by uh, McClellan this time around. So it looks like he gets to keep his job for the moment. So Robertson's Corps is retreating in panic. The enemies have probably suffered total casualties of 5,027 men. There are 629 killed, 919 captured. Our casualties told 491 men, 124 killed, 111 missing, and the rest are wounded. We captured 2,500 rifles and 46 guns from the field and sent 852 soldiers into our catch and release program. And it looks like General Wright took the blame for losing that battle. Knew they had a few corps near. There's the Army of Kentucky headquarters. Where's the rest of the forces they had in this area? 
Get that rolled off. Take a look at what's going on over here in Indian Territory. Where's Six Core? Greg pushed for Shreveport. Interesting. All my core are out of position now from my original plan. Seventh core is not ready to fight yet. They're down the orange, moving into the yellow. Why am I showing a siege here? There's nobody there. I'm going to have to let Grant rest for a few days before we get him moving again. I'll get him back down the river to Shreveport to take on Greg. We are retaking Cairo. Alright, once again, I think this is a good place to end this episode, as I'm saying. I've been saying the last few episodes, I'm going to try and keep the one battle per episode to keep this series going a little longer than uh, they usually do. Most of the federal campaigns end within 15 to 20 episodes, so I feel behooved to make this one last a bit longer than that. I don't think we're going to get it as long as some of my Confederate campaigns, which are 50 to 60 episodes, but we're going to try and get it up there in numbers. So uh, once again, if you're a new viewer, return view, if you're not yet subscribed, please think about hitting that subscribe button. If you do, remember to that bell icon so you alert for the next video comes out. If you'd like a brigade in one of my armies, please let me know in the comments below. Type of unit, status from, weapons, uniforms, officers. And I'll oblige on all counts if possible. And you do not have to be a channel member. You just have to be a subscriber. So, as long as you're subscribed, you'd like a brigade, just let me know in the comments. And I will see you all at the next episode. Stay grumpy.